Today, I'm going to be reviewing this Miele air purifier. Now, this review is going to be slightly different because I first reviewed this device back in 2022. So I'm going to relook at it with all the data and information we have from all the other air purifiers we've tested since then. Now, if you don't want to watch my full review, here are the five things I really like about this device and the four things I don't. The first one is design. It's a great looking device. It was back in 2022 and it is in 2024. It's clear that you could use this device in a living room, it's not gonna look out of place, and it really just stands out when compared to other devices. The second one is that the KDAR value that you get with this device is much better than what we see with premium brands like Molecule or Dyson. It also comes with seven different filter options from H11 only, all the way to the overreactor filter that has activated carbon and H14 filters. It also comes with a really high quality laser sensor. It has a laser sensor from Plan Tower, which is the same brand that we use in our purple air indoor sensors that we use for testing. Now what I don't like. So when we look at the KDAR value you get with the device, it's much less when we compare it to devices from Koei, Lavoie and Winix. The OEM filters that you need to get are also a little higher than average than we've seen. So the overreactor filter, the most expensive filter is $99. And there has been some reports of mechanical failures with these devices, especially from people who bought them originally. And we'll look at that later on. And finally, the pre-filter with this device, it doesn't come with a pre-filter as standard. It's called the Miele Sock and you do have to pay an additional $50 to get it. Right, let's jump into the full review. Design is one of the standout features for the Miele, and unlike many air purifiers that seem to all look the same, whether it's cylindrical or rectangle, the Miele creates this cube design which really just stands out. And even in 2024, looking back, you can see how this has inspired many other brands to make their air purifiers look better. Now on the top of the device, we have a control panel that looks like glass. It could be plastic, but it definitely it feels like glass, could be glass. And this contains the color screen. And when you first switch on the device, it will download firmware. Now, unlike the smart features of most air purifiers that just connect your phone to the device, the Miele will actually connect to an external server and will connect in with there to get the latest data and the latest firmware. One thing I found was really funny was that it comes up with these cool little messages. So when you're doing the firmware, it's, it uses a quote from Neo in the Matrix, Jiu Jitsu, I'm going to learn Jiu Jitsu. So it's clear that Miele know their, their customer audience who are probably millennials like me who just love the Matrix and it just plays, plays to that. Now, once the firmware is updated, the device will calibrate with the onboard sensors to adjust to the room that it's being used in, which again is, is very cool. Now the app itself has a really clean UX, no adverts pushed in like we saw with Lavoie, and there's many different features that I've not yet to see in any other air purifier. One feature that stood out to me was the bubble boy mode. So normally the device will always be adjusting the fan speed so it doesn't generate too much noise, but in bubble boy mode, it will remove those limits and just keep the air as clean as possible. Another feature is turn down mode, which means that the device will come on an hour before your bed to, to keep your bedroom as clean as possible before you fall asleep. And it also has a housekeeping feature, which means that the device can detect whether you're in the room or anyone's in the room. And if there isn't, then it will bring the fans on higher to keep the, the, the room as clean as possible and not worry about generating too much noise. Similar to in a hotel, when you leave the hotel room, they clean the room when you're not there. And these features are very cool. I'm yet to see them in any other device and they make a lot of sense because they deal with one of the big issues with a HEPA air purifier, which is they do can generate a lot of noise. So they're dealing with the issue by using these smart features to mean that it won't generate too much noise or if it does generate noise, it won't be when you can hear it. Now, as part of any review we do here at HouseFresh, I went to the Association of Home Appliance Manufacturers to see if a KDAR report exists. Now, KDAR is short for Clean Air Delivery, and it's basically the gold standard in air cleaning tests. They test in a lab how well each device can remove dust, pollen, and smoke from a test room. Now, the results for the Miele were actually a lot lower than I expected based on their marketing materials, but I did reach out to Miele to, to get clarification, and they said that their AHAM KDAR test was done with the overreactor filter. So this is the highest grade HEPA and the largest amount of carbon that they offer. 
And I do really appreciate that because this filter is likely to be the slowest. And so that means this Aham KDA is basically the worst that this device could possibly be. And I can imagine many manufacturers might be tempted to use the lowest grade filter to get the biggest score. So that's a, a, certainly a point for Miller there. Now the full results for this device, they have a smoke KDAR of 140 CFM, dust 146 CFM and pollen 152 CFM. Now I imagine if you use the lower grade filters with just the HEPA alone, you're likely to see higher KDAR scores. And on the Miele website, they do, for each filter, they show the KDAR that you can be expected to get. Now the KDAR compares pretty well when we look at a, a Dyson device. So we looked at the Dyson TPO7 and this has a price per dust KDAR of $5.45. In comparison, this device with the Miller Rookie Parent has a price per dust KDAR of $1.61. But as I mentioned in the introduction, this compares not so well with other devices we've tested from Lavoie, Coway and Winex. So the Lavoie Vital 200S has a price per dust KDAR of 60 cents. The Winex 5502, has a price per dust KDAR of 65 cents, the Coway AP15122, 60 cents. And in comparison, obviously this is $1.61. Now all the prices that I've given today were based on when I did this review. So many of these prices will change, but I imagine the ratios will still be the same. When you choose the Miele, you get the option for seven different filters, and they range with a KDAR of 246 CFM for the lowest grade filter with no carbon to 149 CFM with their overreactor with the H14 and lots of carbon. I like having this choice. We've seen this with Allen, which means that you can customize the device to fit your specific needs. So for example, if you just want to deal with pollen, you don't care about odors and gases, then you can choose a filter that will be most effective at removing pollen from the air. I still think that having a H14 filter just doesn't make sense. It just feels like marketing. These filters have a really high grade on a single pass filtration, but that really doesn't affect a, an air purifier like this, where there's gonna be multiple passes of air. And in fact, we've tested devices with a H14 and a H13 filter and actually found that the lower grade HEPA is actually quicker at removing particles from the air, which is what you want them to achieve with an air purifier. Now, the amount of options that Miele provides seven different filter options just seems too many and they have these really strange names from overreactor rookie parent that don't exactly tell you what what's in them I much prefer like what smart air does where you have the choice of, of HEPA grade and the choice of whether you get carbon or not and that's really what really matters the the minor differences I don't think feels more like marketing than anything else. And another downside to the filters that Miele uses is, especially with the filters that have carbon, it's actually bonded to the particle filter. And we've seen this with the Lavoie series. And the problem with that is that if the carbon filter runs out quicker, which it's likely to do, you have to throw the particle filter out at the same time, which leads to more e-waste and more cost. So I would much prefer to see Miele have it so the carbon filter was actually separate. So if you have to just replace the carbon, you can, leads to less waste and lower running costs overall. One thing to mention about filters is the pre-filter. So the Miele doesn't come with a pre-filter as standard, but you are given the option to choose the Miele sock for an additional $50. Now the Miele sock is a washable cloth filter that you put over your existing filter. Miele says you can get an extra month from your filter when using it. But it is a shame that it's an optional extra rather than coming with it as standard. While KDAR scores from the Association of Home Appliance Manufacturers are good to identify new devices, we can't rely on them alone to see how well this device will work in your home. Which is why we test all our devices in the same test room of 728 cubic feet. We fill our test room with incense smoke and use purple air indoor sensors to track how quickly each device can remove PM1, PM2.5 and PM10. Because we are testing the Miele air purifier in the same room that we've tested over 70 different air purifiers, we can quickly compare performance. Now the Miele air purifier with the Rookie Parent filter managed to remove all PM1 pollutants in 35 minutes. We would expect that if you used one of the lower grade filters, this would likely reduce. And if you used a higher grade like the overreactor filter, it would be slightly higher. And this very much aligns with the KDAR scores we've already seen. We can also compare this performance with other devices we've tested. So the Lavoit Vital 200S with a cost of $159 took 18 minutes. The Win X5502 took 20 minutes at a cost of 159. Our top budget pit, the Titronics AP003 took 26 minutes at $99. 
The Smart Air SA600 at $279 took 33 minutes. The Allen Flex at $279 took 34 minutes. And the ones that took longer, the Dyson TP07 took 49 minutes at a cost of $489. And the Molecule Mini took 53 minutes at $279. As with Kadar, the Miele doesn't compare very well to brands like Lavoie, Kowei, Winex, and even Allen, but it was much better than Dyson and Molecule. The second most important thing when choosing an air purifier is the amount of sound it generates. If it's great at cleaning the air, but it's too loud, you're unlikely to use it regularly, which is why we use a sound meter like this at three feet away to see how much sound is generated at each fan speed. Now the Miele has the fan speeds in increments of 10%, so we chose a number of fan speeds to track the levels of sound. At fan speed 10%, it hit 37.5 decibels. At 30%, 42.2 decibels, 60%, 54.8 decibels, and 80%, 58.8 decibels. At its highest fan speed at 100%, it hit 59.2 decibels. Now, due to its smart functionality, it's unlikely the Miele will be running at 100% at any amount of time, but we still think it's fair to compare it to other devices we've tested. So the Allen Flex, which is one of the quietest devices we've looked at, hit the sound of 50.7 decibels at its highest fan speed. The Dyson TP07 hit 54.4 decibels. The Kowei Air Mega 150 hit 55.6 decibels. Obviously the Miele at 59.2 decibels. And then the Molecule Mini hit 68.2 decibels. At its highest fan speed, the Miele was louder than many of the devices we've tested, but was still well under what we saw with the Molecule Mini, which is one of the loudest. We also like to find out how much energy it uses at each fan speed. So we use an energy meter like this to see how much energy it's used at each of these different fan speeds. Now the results for the Miele were very interesting. At standby, it's still used 5.62 watts, which probably accounts for all the smart functionality and the color screen that's enabled. At 10%, it was 8.42 watts, 30%, 10.1 watts, 60%, 20.45 watts, and 80%, 36.2 watts, and its highest fan speed at 100%, it hit 38.32 watts. Now, assuming you leave this device running at its highest fan speed 24 seven, every day of the year, it's gonna add an additional $40.28 to your energy bill. We can compare this to other devices we've tested. So the Allen Flex hit a max of 24.2 watts, which will add an additional $25 to your energy bill. The Dyson TP07, 28.9 28 watts, an additional $30. The Kowei Air Mega 150, 31.5 watts, so $33 on your bill. Lavoie Core 300, 35.5 watts, and adds an additional $37. Obviously the Miele with 38.32 watts adds an additional $40. And the Molecule Mini hits 49.6 watts, which adds $52.14. So compared to many of the devices, this is quite a power hungry device. It's not just electricity costs that add to the running costs of running an air purifier. Any air purifier that use mechanical filters such as HEPA or Activate Carbon will need them replacing eventually. Now Miele recommends to replace your filters for these devices every six months. So every year you'll need to buy two filters. To keep things simple, we've compared the Rookie Parent filter, which is available for $69, which will equal an additional yearly cost of running this device of $138. Now bear in mind that they do have other filters such as the basic breather, which go as low as $59 up to the overreactor at $99. And since doing our review back in 2022, there are a lot of generic filters available. Bear in mind they only have one filter, so you can't pick and choose the different options like you can with the OEM filters, but they're around half the price. Now we compared the filter cost to other devices we've tested, and we can see here, we have the Allen Flex, uh, one year of filter costs at $69, which brings the total running cost to $94. The Dyson TP07, you only have to replace it every 12 months, but $79.99 for the filters, which equates to $124 per year. The Lavoie Vital 200S, you only need to filter change every 12 months at $59.99, which equates to a, a running cost of $127. And the Miele Rookie Parent, obviously $138 per year, which means the running cost of this device for a year is $178. The Air Doctor 3000, another device we tested, a year of filter cost is $125, which brings running cost to $267. And the Molecule Mini, which is probably one of the, has the highest filter replacement cost we've seen at $199.98 per year, has a running cost of $275.56. 
Now, one thing I noticed was on the Miller website, you can actually get the best price for filters directly from them, especially if you go with their subscription service. So when you buy the device from them, you can get a free filter if you go with the subscription service and the prices do seem to be much better on Amazon. So if you are gonna go down the route of the Miller, I would probably say getting the filters direct from Miller and if possible, getting the filter subscription because you're likely gonna pay a lot less than having to buy them directly from other retailers. So there are some other issues I wanted to talk about this device. And one of them was on the Mila Care subreddit, there was lots of complaints from customers who saying that the bearings had stopped working or the device had just stopped working after one to two years, sometimes outside of the warranty. And I couldn't not do this review and look into this in more detail. Whilst I know that many people who have issues are the first people to go online, there was just too many customers having this issue for it just to be marked off as just standard uh, wear and tear issues that would happen with any product. Now, I wanna be clear that looking at the subreddit, the Mila Care customer service team were exceptional. They were always providing advice, uh, providing replacements when required. So it was clear they weren't trying to kind of cover this under the carpet. And I'm not suggesting that they are in any way, but I wanted to reach out to the Miele team to see what they had to say. The Miele team got back to me very quickly. They had a quote from uh, Grant Pridge, the CEO of Miele, and he had this to say. So I'm just gonna read it out for him. So we identified two issues with our earliest OG Millers a motor bearing that could wear prematurely and a capacitor that could cause that could fail causing the device not to boot, boot up. Both typically occurred after one to two years. Once identified, we address them all in new production runs. We know our customers buy Miele for the health of their families and we take that responsibility seriously. So we use this as an opportunity to go above and beyond and put reliability and customer care at our core. Since these issues typically didn't occur until after the warranties expired, any of our OG customers experiencing an issue received a replacement unit at no charge. We also started rolling out our Miele Cares program, which gives all subscribers to our filter auto refill program a three year warranty. For good measure, we upgraded the warranty for all customers from one year to two. And because we want to ensure Miele is protecting your fam for years to come, we offer all auto refill subscribers an extended warranty where they can get their Miele replaced for $99 if they experience any issue in the years four and five. So the reality is that there can be things that go wrong with device, especially with a device like the Miele, where it's a completely new design, trying to do something very new in the space. And, and issues can occur. And it's clear that Miele has been quite open that these issues have occurred, but I'm really impressed with how they've responded. Uh, before this, I hoped that they were going to talk about increasing warranties and they already have. And it's also great to hear that they're even extending the warranty up to four to five years for those on refill subscriptions. I also want to be clear that because Miele has all of their customer service public on their subreddit, they're not trying to hide this away. Most companies have customer service behind closed doors so no one can really see it. The fact that I was even be aware of it, I think says to, that Miele is in this for the long game and are happy that customers are able to be open about the issues they're having with this device. My recommendation, if you're one of the people who have an issue with this OG Miller, then be sure to reach out to them. I'm sure they're gonna be, they're gonna make it right to you and sort you out with a replacement. So is the Miele worth it in 2024? Now I was super impressed with the smart features back in 2022 and I have to say I'm still impressed as I was back then. If you have a smart home already and want an air purifier that is smart as the other devices in your house, then the Miele is worth your consideration. The Miele combines a really high quality laser sensor with an onboard computer that connects to their servers. It truly is a smart device whereas most air purifiers, they just have a sensor with an auto mode and basically an app that's more like a remote control. With Miele, you do get some really clever tech under the hood. And for that alone, it's a device that's worth consideration. Whilst those looking for the best bang for your buck will likely be better off if devices from Koei, Lavoie or Winex, those wanting smart features and an aesthetically pleasing design, the Miele has to be up there of the devices you could choose. When we compared its test results with units from Dyson and Molecule, it was a much better air purifier. Now its OEM filters are a little higher than average, but you do get the choice of seven different filters, which can really mean you can customize your Miele to fit the pollutants in your home. Whilst I was concerned to see the mechanical failures with some of the original units, I was impressed by the customer service reaction on their subreddit and from hearing from their CEO and the fact that they're going to increase the warranties sometimes up to five years for those people on refills is, is, is impressive, especially to, for a device that is still fairly new to the market. 
If you have any questions about the Miele, then be sure to put them in the comments below and I'll see you in the next review.